What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's my team selection for game week 32. So I'm going to run you through how the team is looking, thoughts on some possible luxury transfers that I could make, or whether it's better to roll and have more flexibility later on. I'll talk through captaincy as well, though I'm very much undecided. And I'll quickly show you how I did in game week 31. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with game week 31. And it was one of those game weeks which felt a little bit worse than it probably actually was in the end. So what did I say last week? That I was 23K and I was hoping by the end of the season to get into the top 10K or the top 5K. And what did I say straight after that? Now I've said it, I'm probably going to get a red arrow. And that's exactly what happened. Even though on paper... I felt like my team looked incredible for game week 31. Obviously, it doesn't always work out like that, but it looked good. Triple Liverpool against Sheffield United, triple Arsenal against Luton at home. I had Palmer, Son, Haaland, etc. And in the end, it was a red arrow. Now, it was only small. I got lucky with auto subs and stuff like that, and I'm only just outside the top 25K. So I've fallen about 1,000 places, so it's really not the end of the world. But I felt like that team should have done a lot better. The problem was, or one of the key problems, was that I sold Phil Foden ahead of a hat-trick absolute nightmare i sold him patrick bruno fernandez scored last night against chelsea and also watkins who's obviously injured and had man city anyway and i bought in salah to captain who went off before the 60th minute with no returns so that was a one pointer uh, i bought in darwin nunez who did score but it was only six points no bonus or anything like that and sarabia also got an assist and a bonus point so that was six points that was kind of nice because he came off the bench for harland who played zero minutes but bringing in Salah for captaincy against Sheffield United and getting one point is an absolute killer. Now, how do I feel about those moves? Obviously, in hindsight, I wish I hadn't sold Foden. I could have got Salah for free and just not got Darwin Nunez. That was a move that I considered. So that feels a little bit horrible, basically. Like you don't want to sell a player that scores a hat-trick, obviously, especially when you've also benched his hat-trick a few weeks ago as well. But selling Bruno Fernandes to get Salah against Sheffield United at home, nothing wrong with that. Wanting a second Liverpool attacker for Sheffield United at home. Nothing wrong with that either. And Darwin got 90 minutes, right? Some people were worried that he might be on the bench. I include myself in that. And in the end, he plays 90 minutes. So I don't think I can really beat myself up too much about the moves that I made. But obviously, if I could go back, I would keep Foden because I'm about 14 points down or something like that on those moves. So not great. Um, I, think, I think reduced minutes during the midweek games was all, always possible. I just didn't think that it would be Salah coming off before Darwin Nunez. But look, these things happen. And a lot of people would have capped in Salah anyway. So that's not really where the red arrow happened. It was more so from not, not having Foden's hat trick. Uh, obviously, Saka missed out completely as well. But this is where I got lucky, right? This is why the week's not as bad as it seems. Because Saka also missed out. And I got Zabani off the bench with seven points. And obviously, Neto in goal also got seven points. So Gabriel and Saliba, great. Double clean sheet. But not having an Arsenal attacker for that game, not necessarily ideal. And obviously in that Liverpool game, where Salah only gets a one point, uh, Darwin only gets six, Bradley scores an own goal. Like, you just have to laugh at stuff like that. Genuinely, I think like, you can feel bad about selling Foden, absolutely. But when your defender scores an own goal, and that's the only goal in the match, like whatever, you just got to laugh that off. Because I felt like if I could get you know, this game for Bradley and Brighton at home, in game week 30 i was pretty happy with that i don't really need him for any more game weeks and to come away with four points total over those two games doesn't feel great obviously palmer got a hat trick last night against man united another two penalties look he is a great fpl pick and he has done really well outside of penalties but the amount of penalties chelsea have had this season is absolutely crazy i think it's like eight or nine or something like that for him now it reminds me of bruno fernandez's first season when he got a ton of penalties, and then next season they died down a little bit and his points total came down. I think that's going to happen with Palmer next year. He will still be a really good pick, but I think people's expectations on him will probably be too high. But obviously I'm happy that I've got him, right? Paying 4.9 million for a player that's on course for 200 points this year, absolutely crazy. Uh, elsewhere, Son blanked against West Ham, not happy with that. Solanke blanked as well, two points. But overall, you know, selling a hat-trick and getting a 1,000 place red arrow and being still in and around the top 25k pretty happy with that but i'm not going to say any more let's have a look at game week 32 all right let's start with the defensive options the goalkeeper decision is pretty easy i've got Neto against luton away and Ariola against wolves away who's currently red flagged he missed the game against spurs in game week 31 i think it was with a groin injury now david moyes might say that he's fine for the weekend but i think i'm going to play Neto either way if both keepers were available it's actually quite close 
Like, I do think Wolves is the better attacking team, but obviously they are missing Neto and Huang at the moment, and Luton do tend to score at home. I think probably neither Bournemouth or West Ham are going to keep a clean sheet, but I still prefer that Luton away fixture on paper, so I'll probably play Neto even if Ariola uh, is available. My five defenders, my five defender choices are Doughty against Bournemouth at home, Gabriel and Saliba double up on Arsenal against Brighton away, Bradley against Man United away and Zabani against Luton away. Now, I'm currently playing Doughty, Gabriel and Saliba. I don't necessarily expect an Arsenal clean sheet because Brighton are one of those teams you always think are going to score. But obviously, the Arsenal defence is incredible. They're not going to rest players in that game. Declan Rice will definitely be back in the team. That will obviously help as well. And Gabriel and Saliba are no slouches from set pieces either. So there could be attacking threat there. So I think I'm going to play both of them. With Bradley... I'm benching him. Now, he has played every single game apart from one while Trent has been out from what I could see. I think I went back and had a look. I think that's correct. The game he missed was Man United away in the FA Cup. They played Simakas and Gomez instead. I'm just wondering if they might do that again because Bradley's played the last two matches with Gomez on the left. I just don't know if Simakas is going to continue to be left out completely. So they might play Simakas on the left and Gomez on the right and just give Bradley a little bit of a break. So I think because of that and the fact that I expect Man United to score in that game probably means I'm going to bench him. Liverpool could, you know, go and win. I think the way the two teams are playing at the moment, most people would say Liverpool will beat Man United despite what happened in the FA Cup. But I just think Bradley's likely to lose that clean sheet and I'm not 100% certain about a start. So I'm probably going to just bench him. If Trent is still out for game week 33, then I'll definitely put Bradley in the team against Palace at home. But for this week, he's probably on the bench. So then it's a choice between Zabani or Doughty. Zabani would be a double up on the Bournemouth defence because I've got Neto in goal. I'm not particularly worried about that, but I just think Luton always tend to find a way to score, especially at home. And obviously Doughty's way more attacking than Zabani's, despite Zabani getting me a goal uh, in game week 28. Now I do have a Bournemouth attacker in Solanke, so I could go for the upside play and not go for the Luton defender as well. But even if Luton lose the clean sheet, which I expect they will, You've got attacking potential from Doughty. So unless he's ruled out of a knock or something like that, I'm probably just going to play him and bench Bradley and Zabani. Now, the other choice I have is to make a defender transfer. Now, with, with my strategy, I'm dead ending into game week 34. And I'll show you how the rough plans look for the next three game weeks later in the video. But essentially, at some point, I'm probably going to have 10 or 11 double game weekers and have a spare transfer left over. So I could make a defender move this week and just bench Doughty as well. I'm just not sure it's worth it. I feel like rolling the, the transfer this week and having more information for game week 33 is probably the better move. If I was to make a transfer, it would probably be for Vardio at Man City, so Palace away and Luton at home next two fixtures, play him instead of Doughty, or just bring in Aint Nuri, because obviously he is super attacking at the moment, and Wolves' next two fixtures are West Ham at home and Forest away. I've got to be honest, a choice between the two... I'll probably go for Aiton Uri because he's also got a double in 34 just in case I need to play him then as well because of the attacking upside. The problem I have with Man City defenders is when they lose the clean sheet, it feels like that's it. Like Vardio could go and get you a goal or an assist, absolutely. But there's just not as much upside as there is with other defenders. I'm not sure I can just bring myself to bring in a Man City defender. I mentioned Vardio last week. I do think his minutes will be good while Ake is out and I'm pretty sure he will play in 32 and 33. But I guess I'm also not 100% certain on that. So I'd probably rather go for the Wolves defender. So that is a possibility. I could do, who would it be? It'd probably be Doughty. Maybe Bradley. I'd maybe do Bradley and free up the Liverpool spot just in case I want to go for a Liverpool attacker later on. Because right now, right, and again, I will show you the plans later. I've got double Arsenal already for the, for the double game week in 34. I only need one more. So if I bring in Aiton Uri that this week, that could be it. I won't necessarily need a Liverpool defender as well. But the current plan later is to get Van Dijk. So if I bring in Aiton Uri for the next two weeks, I probably won't even play him in game week 34. But I guess he's there as a backup. So that is quite tempting. I'm just worried that if I make a move this week, next week something will happen. I'll just wish I had two transfers. But if there's no injuries and no suspensions or anything like that, it's not really going to be too much of an issue so as i as i talk through this i'm slowly talking myself into maybe bringing eight Nuri in because west ham at home and forest away i don't mind those fixtures and he is playing as part of that kind of forward line he's not playing as a left back at the moment that won't always hold but it might do 
in the short term. So I think that looks fine, by the way. Neto in goal, Doughty, Gabriel, and Saliba. But I am going to have a spare transfer. I can't carry them through to the wild card or anything like that. So I might make a move. But as it stands, the plan is to roll. So my midfield four is Palmer against Sheffield United away, Salah against Man United away, Son against Forrest at home, who currently has the captain's armband, but I'll talk about that later because I'm a little bit uncertain about that one. And then Saka against Brighton away, who's currently yellow flagged with Sarabia on the bench. Now, I spoke about Saka in yesterday's video. I'm not particularly worried about him moving forward. I guess my confidence in his starts and minutes have gone down a little bit given that he wasn't in the squad against Luton at all. He came off early against Man City. I definitely think there's an issue there in terms of injury. But I think if it wasn't Luton at home, he would have at least been in the squad for that Arsenal game. I think Arteta just uh, took that as a chance to completely rest him because he felt he could win the game without him. And the thing that put me at ease about that was the fact that Rice was on the bench as well. There was just enough other rotation where it just felt like Arteta was giving players a rest, which is what he did for those on the bench. Yes, the fact that Saka wasn't in the squad at all is a little bit of a worry, but I'm going to be surprised if he's not playing against Brighton. So I think he will start that game. I'll obviously wait and see what Arteta says in the press conference, but I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty hopeful, a little bit confident that he will start against Brighton. If he misses out completely again, I do have Sarabia off the bench with West Ham at home. And while Neto and Huang are injured, he should continue to start. The thing for Saka for my team is I need him for game week 34. If he's going to play both games, he is still, in my eyes, the best Arsenal midfielder, especially with penalties and stuff like that. So I don't want to make any rash decisions and move him to someone else. Those of you that maybe have the same midfield, but you're free hitting in 34, maybe Saka to Foden is a good move for you because you can just free hit him in or someone else from Arsenal in 34. I don't have that luxury. That's not part of my strategy. I'm wildcarding in game week 35 instead. So I want to keep hold of Saka a little bit longer. Because I just I just look at the matches they've got coming up. I still think they're good for an attacker, but they're more difficult than Luton at home. I just think he'll play. Right? I could be wrong on that, and I'll wait and see what Arteta says, but that's how I feel right now. Um, Palmer and Salah going absolutely nowhere. Obviously, I only just brought Salah in. Great fixture for Palmer. He's done incredible this season. Right? I'm just going to double check. His points are 177. Given that he didn't start a game until game week eight, that's absolutely ridiculous. 16 goals, 9 assists. I don't know how many of them were penalties. About 8, I would say. Even if you strip the penalties away, that's still a ridiculous return. And obviously, it's a great fixture. And Man United away, look, on paper, that hasn't been a tough fixture for Liverpool for quite a while now. And Man United's defending is atrocious. I think, I haven't double-checked after this week's games, after game week 31, but before that, they were like bottom five for expected goals conceded. It's a terrible defence. Liverpool is a really good attack. I think there's every chance that I just put the captain's armband on Salah. Obviously, I've got Haaland as well. And I come on, spoiler alert, I've still got Haaland. Like, I think Son, Salah, Palmer and Haaland are all really good options. And I'm finding it really difficult to split them. I know what's going to happen with Palmer. He's going to do well against Sheffield United. And if I don't captain him, there'll be loads of comments saying it's just because of his price. It's not the case. I still think he's brilliant, right? Of course I do. And he might end up with the captain's armband. I just think you look at the underlying stats of someone like Salah, the goal threat is just a little bit high. They've both got penalties, so there's nothing to split them there. I really don't know. I'm very uncertain about captaincy this week. Like, my initial instinct was just to put it on Son. Good home game, while Salah, Palmer, and Hun are all playing away from home. But Palmer and Salah are playing against really bad defences, like terrible defences. And Forrest are probably a little bit better. But then part of me thinks, am I hesitating on Son? Because he blanked last week. I mean, Salah did as well, to be fair. But that does play a part in your thinking, even though it shouldn't, right? Palmer's just off the back of a hat trick, and now he's got Sheffield United away. It's hard to just ignore that, right? So, I don't know. The initial instinct was Son, but I may well just switch that. The thing I like about Son is he's probably going to play through the middle again. I don't have that much confidence about Richarlison starting. And obviously, he's also on penalties as well, and it's a home game. Like, on their day, Spurs are you know, really good in attack. And I don't, I think Man United and Sheffield United defences are awful. And Forrest probably is a little bit better, maybe. But there's not much in it. I don't know. Honestly, I think I could sit here for another 30, 60 minutes recording this and not come to a conclusion on who's the best captain. I think the other thing that's a worry is there's going to be big swings if you get it wrong. 
Like, if I don't go Palmer, like, everyone's going to be swarming to him now, especially... At, like, people would have probably done it anyway, but that's going to increase even more after the hat trick. So, if I had to say right now, I think Son won't be my captain. I think I'll probably move it to Salah or Palmer. Like, Haaland is an option as well, but I just think I'd probably put it on the midfielder. I don't know. Like, I, I can't... Haaland's not going to continue on this trend of, of just not getting returns. At some point, he's going to bang in a brace or a hat trick. And Palace away is not the worst fixture to do it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments who you're captain in. I think I'm going to switch to... I, I suspect I'm going to end up on Palmer because of the Sheffield United fixture and, and the hat trick's going to play on my mind. But I would not be surprised if Salah walks away with, with a few returns against Man United. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Son does that against Forrest. Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not making any transfers with my midfield. If someone misses out, I've got Sarabia... Look, Foden, yes, I wish I had him back from last week. But I don't think I need to bring him back in, especially on uh, the strategy of dead end 34. I'm absolutely not looking forward to looting a home in game week 33 for Foden. I just hope he gets a rest at some point, but I'm not even that confident about that. So no transfers in my midfield, captaincy all over the place. That'll probably come down to the last minute on deadline, which it hasn't done for a while. I'm usually pretty sure about my captaincy. This week, just less so. And then up front, it's Haaland against Crystal Palace away, Darwin Nunez against Man United away, and Solanke against Luton away. So lots of away games this week. In fact, the only two players in my current 11 with a home match are Doughty against Bournemouth and Son against Forrest at home. But I'm not particularly worried about that because last week I had a load of home fixtures and it didn't really work out as well as I'd hoped. So you never know what's going to happen. With Haaland, I've spoken about this over the last game week or so. I think for my team, it just doesn't make any sense to sell him. Maybe if you don't own him, you don't bring him back in. I get that. But for me, I'm going to play him against Crystal Palace away. He's been rested against Villa. I would be shocked if he doesn't start this match. It's a good fixture. And selling him doesn't really enable a huge amount else in my team. I've only got one transfer. So even if I sold Haaland and wanted to use those funds, it would then take a hit. And who am I going to take a hit for? I just don't think there's really anyone that I need. And because I'm dead ending into game week 34, Spurs don't have a fixture that week. So I'll probably sell, well, I'll almost certainly sell Son, probably to Eze, and that's going to free up a lot of money anyway. So I just don't think I need to sell Haaland. So I might not captain him this week, but he's definitely going to be in the team. And if I think he starts against Luton at home in 33, I will captain him that week. I'm pretty certain of that. This week, I think captaincy is tricky just because there's so many good options. In game week 33, it's not quite the case. I mean, that week, like Salah's got Palace at home, Palmer's got Everton at home, and Saka's got... Villa at home, and even Son's got Newcastle away. So there are still really good options. But if Harlan looks like starting, he's going to be the one for me. Uh, with Darwin Nunez, he's potentially a reason for me to roll the transfer this week because he didn't pick up a yellow card in last night's game, but he's still on eight. So if he got one against Man United away, which I think there's a possibility of, and then picks one up against Palace in 33, he would miss both games in the double game week. He's got to get through that Palace game without picking up a 10th yellow card. And if he does do, if he does get the tenth yellow card, like missing both games in the double would be a nightmare. So keeping my options open with two free transfers is probably the best thing to do, because if he picked one up this week and next week, then in thirty four with two free transfers, my moves are Darwin Nunez to Cunha probably or Mateta, and obviously I just bring in Diaz instead, and that that's my triple up on Liverpool. So that's my main worry about using a transfer this week. If Darwin gets a yellow, that's then very risky for game week 33. I mean, the chances of him getting two yellows in two games, probably not that high. But also, I don't completely trust him. So that's maybe a good enough reason to roll. And then Solanke's got a double game week in 34 and a good fixture this week. So there's no need to get rid of him. Would I like someone like Izak in my team? Absolutely. He looks like an incredible differential for those of you that have wildcarding in 30 or 31. But for me, it just makes a lot more sense to ignore him and just get him on my wild card in game week 35 instead. Am I worried about what he's going to do in the meantime? Absolutely. But I've picked this strategy and I've got to stick with it. Because if I do Darwin or Solanke to Isaac, I'm then looking to bring one of those two back in for the double in 34. So I'm pretty set. I think I'm going to make no transfers. But I do think I'm going to switch the captaincy probably. I mean, I was looking on the My Team Tool on Fantasy Football Hub, as always, links in the description. But I think they've probably got Saka's points projections for um, Game Week 32, like, quite low. Like, 5.2, that seems a bit low to me. But they've got Salah at 7.3, Haaland at 7.2, and Son at 7. That shows you how close the captaincy choice is this week. Obviously, in hindsight, there's going to be a lot of people that tell you, well, you should have gone for this player. But 
I think all four of those players are really good. Um, just quickly on my transfers, right? If I roll 32, then when I go into game week 33, I'm potentially in a position where I don't need to make a transfer as well, but I've got two to use. So I'd have Darwin against Palace at home, Haaland against Luton at home, Solanke against Man United at home, and obviously, I mean, Man United at home is a fine fixture, to be honest with you. But again, I'm keeping him for the double. Palmer against Everton at home, Saka against Villa at home, Son Newcastle away, Salah Palace at home. None of those players need to be sold. Gabriel and Saliba against Villa at home, again, holding on to them for the double. And Neto against uh, Man United at home, or Ariola against Fulham at home, if he's fine. There's not really a transfer to make. If I do get to 33 with two moves, I'm either selling Son and Bradley to as a... Let, let's just do that, right? So if I sell... Son to, let me just go here, yeah, Eze, and then do Bradley out for Van Dyke because I, I do think by game week 34, Bradley's minutes will probably not be that great. Then I've got to play Sarabia instead of Eze because Eze's got Liverpool away. I'm really just bringing him in for game week 34. So I'm having to sell Son before Newcastle away, which I don't particularly like because I think that's a pretty good fixture for him. And then when I get to game week 34, I've got Neto, Van Dyke, Gabriel, Saliba, double game weeks. I've got Saka, Sarabia, Salah, and Eze. So he would get played instead of Palmer. I don't want to sell Palmer because I bought him so cheap and he's gone up so much. And I definitely want him on wildcard 35. But I'm happy not to play him against Arsenal away. And then I've got Solanke, Darwin, and Haaland. So I potentially, with those moves, rolling game week, hopefully you're paying, atten uh, paying attention. Hopefully you're um, following this along. So I know it can get a bit complicated. That's why the planners are so handy. If I roll this week and do Son to Eze and Bradley to Van Dyke in 33, I get to 34 with 10 double game weekers, including Zabani on the bench. And my only single game weaker is Haaland against Brighton away. Now, I could, of course, do Haaland to Cunha or Mateta. But I'll probably just want to keep Haaland for that game, which means I've got no other moves to make. And there's not really any luxury moves either, like, what, Saliba to... Ben White, like it's not that exciting. So that is why I've potentially got the luxury of making a transfer um, this week instead, where I could maybe bring in eight Nuri. So if I just quickly run you through that, if I just bring my team back here, hopefully it's just going to load up. Essentially, I would do so. Saka would play instead of Sarabia. I would do. Uh, I'd probably sell Connor Bradley to be honest with you, and just hope that he doesn't play in game week thirty three. And bring in Sarabi, uh, not Sarabi, I'm losing my mind here. Ain't Nuri instead. And I would just make that transfer. And then in game week 33, I would just roll instead. So if I just bring up, so it's just showing you one game week, I could just roll in game week 33 rather than, rather than make a transfer and just keep Son for Newcastle away. And then I would get, because I'm happy to play Ain't Nuri against Forest away. Then I would get to game week 34 with two free transfers. And then I could deal with Son. And then I could decide what to do with Darwin Nunez. If he's picked up a 10th yellow card, then I can just swap him out as well. So I would probably get Son to Diaz and just pick up Mateta or Cunha. So I don't know. That's the dilemma I'm in. Do I make a move this week or do I go to game week 33? Like if I get to 33 and I don't want to sell Son, I could just make a goalkeeper move instead and bring in Pickford. But at some point, I've got to use all those transfers ahead of the wild card. So it, basically the dilemma is, do I roll and hope that there's some kind of chaos, which means I'm in a better position because I've got two free transfers to deal with it. Or do I make the most of the fixtures now and just hope there's no chaos and that my team looks okay? So that's the plan, right? Long-winded plan. Captaincy, I'll decide later on. I'm, I, right now, I've got Song Captain, Harlem Vice Captain. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Palmer Captain, Salah Vice by the deadline. I might do Bradley to eight Nuri. Other than that, I'm probably making no moves this week. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you again later for final thoughts.